Somebody say with me, it is enough. Enough of what? Enough of what? You say it, fill it up. It's an open check for you. Enough of suffering, enough of sickness, enough of accident, enough of barrenness, enough of delay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. You have said it, you will see it. Raise your two hands one more time. Bless the Lord from the depth of your heart. This is the seventh day in our prayer and fasting. Are you thanking God for the strength he's giving you? Are you giving God the glory? Do that loudly. Do that sincerely. Do that from the depth of your heart. Joyfully do that. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. A loud, thankful amen. Before you take your seat, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 16. Let's see where the caption of today is rooted. 2 Samuel 24, verse 16. I want all of us to see that and hinge your faith. The faith of man is rooted in the word of God. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord changed his mind. The word repent means to change the mind of the evil. And he said to the angel that destroyed the people, stop, it is enough. What did God say? Who says so? It is enough. Therefore, stay now your hand. That is, withdraw the sword. And the angel of the Lord was at the threshing place of Araona the Jebusite. Who said so? Who said so? Do you believe it? To prove you believe it, say it right now. Say it again. Say it again. Then it is done. If you can say what God says, then He will do what He has said. If you can say what God has said, then He will do what He said He will do. Lift up your hand again and thank Him from the depth of your heart and be declaring it is enough. 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 Is somebody still saying that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to join me as we inspire our faith in what God has said. Let's sing the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Be it unto me, according to your word, according to your promise, I can stand secure. Write upon my heart the truth that set me free. According to your word, O Lord, be it unto me. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. According to your word, according to your promises, I can stand secure. Come upon my heart, the truth that sets me free. According to your word, oh Be it unto me, be it unto me, 
according to your word, according to your, according to your promises, I can, I can stand secure. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turn around. And join me, say amen and amen. amen. The prophetic focus for this month, as read to us a little while ago, is prayer and fasting empowers fulfillment of prophecies would that happen in your life will it happen in your life this is an amen service be responding accordingly will that happen in your life yes, amen means let it be so so anything said about you all you need to do is to do an amen to it this month prayer and fasting will enhance the fulfillment of prophecy in your life Today is our also, I mean, also our day of enough is enough. What does that mean? No negative thing will go back home with you today. No adversity will prevail over your life again. Whatever was pursuing you before for evil will no longer locate you to pursue you. We had the story. From the testimony of that young man, every time the wife delivered, he must have accident. Three solid times after each of those three children, until he encountered the word of the Lord, no more accident for you. Did God do it for him or not? Enough is enough. He terminated there. Every plague of the wicked one over your life, is terminating now when is it terminating every mark of the devil over your life is cancelled now i want you to please from now any word you hear from this altar from any of the servant of god ministering just take it raw swallow it all Take it raw. Swallow it all. It's amazing. You believe what your doctors told you. Why can't you believe what your pastor is telling you? Especially when it is being spoken from the word of God. We have no words of our own. I am not speaking to you from what I created by myself. But from the word of God. So when I tell you, you cannot be barren again. Take it wrong. Take it wrong. Stop the argument. Stop explaining to me your situation. You had the testimony of that lady. Wanted to explain to me. The spirit said, no. Tell her what she's going to get. Manifestation is the end of explanation. 
Amen. Revelation is the cure to every argument. Somebody said, won't you even wait for me to tell you the genesis of the problem? I said, no. Don't bother about Genesis. I already have Revelation. Don't take me back to Genesis when we are already in Revelation. I say to you today by the word of the Lord, every devil tormenting you comes to an end today. We had a mysterious testimony on, I think on Wednesday or Thursday. A lady was brought to this church for the first time by her sister, according to them. She had had accident. The bones, the hip were affected and came with crutches, sat on the chair. She couldn't stand up. And they said, this lady needs attention. She said, now, you are standing up from here. Now, you are standing up from here. You will testify. You will come back tomorrow to testify. And she said, oh, I can't even stand up. Oh, my hip is pain. I said, is that what I told you? I said, stand up. <laughs> stand up. Praise God. And they helped her to stand up. She walked by herself without the crutches. And the following day, she climbed the altar here to share her testimony. I don't care what the devil has told you about yourself. At the appointed time, you are returning with your testimony. You are returning with your own testimony. Enough is enough of losses in your family. Enough is enough to poverty in your family. Enough is enough to untimely death in your family. Give God a big shout, somebody. This also been the seventh day of our fasting. I want you to expect today rest. Rest. Seventh day is Sabbath day. Day of rest. And that's why enough is enough is preceded. Or is preceded for the day. By the close of the day, you turn to the right, rest. Turn to the left, rest. Look ahead of you, rest. Look at your back. All around you today, what will you see? Rest. Let me also specially commend every one of you who have been engaging. This church is known to be a spiritually zealous church. A church where people take spiritual things serious. And again, I want you to know that God is very proud of you. That you are not taking this spiritual exercise for light. Particularly also that you are engaging in praying kingdom advancement prayer. Thy kingdom come Lord. Save more souls Lord. And as you are doing that, I want you to watch out. God who sees you in the secret shall certainly you shall certainly reward you in the open our every sunday service teaching is captioned understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting and we're looking at part 1a in this service be reminded again this morning that god's commandments are ordained for our profiting there is nothing god says that is for his own profit Everything he says is for the profit of you and I. Scripture is very clear. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17. All scriptures, all, is given by inspiration of God, direct from God, and is profitable. So scriptures are profitable. They are for your profit making. Nobody follows scriptures and suffer losses. Following God is for our profit. If you follow, you get profited. You don't follow, it's your cup of tea. Among such commandments is the command to fast. For our specific benefits as contained in scriptures, take time to study Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 to 14. Specific 
benefits. When you fast, the bounds of wickedness is loosed. Heavy burdens are undone. Yokes are destroyed. Revelation, unlimited. Divine guidance becomes your portion. You become as a watered garden. Specific benefits. Therefore, as it is being read to us, in the prophetic focus for the month, beware. Don't sell your birthright to your belly. Don't eat today and suffer losses tomorrow. Fasting demands discipline. When Jesus fasted, he became hungry. So it's natural for the body to be hungry. And as a matter of fact, fasting, among others, is about denying yourself of food, controlling your mouth, controlling your appetite, controlling your taste and your smell. There are people, once they smell food, the next thing is the mouth. They eat like chicken in the poultry. Nothing good passes in front of them. Mixing Mortina plus Fanta. <laughs> Odd dog in one side of the mouth, do not on the other side. Granot by the side. Guguru at another side. If you are in such situation, you are delivered today. <laughs> Food is good. But woe at thou. O oh land, when your king wakes up in the morning looking for food, and blessed are thou, O oh land, when your kings eat for strength and not for pleasure. Food is good for strength, for strength, not for pleasure, not to satisfy appetite. And one way to demonstrate maturity, even in the natural, is the control of your mouth for food. A foolish man uses knife and fork to commit suicide. No appetite. Gullible. Eating everything like Esau. He lost his birthright. No one here will lose their birthright. May your belly not become your God. Philippians 3.19, Hebrews 12.16. There are some people who are described that their belly has become their God. Greed, avarice, lack of control. Everything they see, they want to eat. Everything they see, they want to buy. There are people today who spend 70% of their salary for food. And when people see him, babake, babake, because their belly is, is like a pot. Amen. I don't mean to say that everybody that is fat is gullible anyway. <laughs> there are some people who are naturally so. But you must control your appetite. That's what you are saying. Fasting time is fasting time. Somebody help me say fasting time is fasting time. You take it serious if you want to end it glorious. Take it serious. Quickly. What approach should we give to fasting if it must be profitable what are the biblical approach to profitable fasting number one when you are fasting you must define your goals and objectives define your goals if you lack goals you will end as good define your goals why am I fasting if you have not done that, get your notes. Write down, why am I fasting? Examples. When evil was looming upon the Jews in the days of Esther, Esther chapter 4, verses 15 to 17, all of them were to be destroyed. And Esther bade them return. Mordecai this answer go gather all the jews that are present in shushan 
and fast ye for me. And that means don't eat or drink for three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go it in unto the king, which is not according to the law. That is, I am taking a risk. This is not allowed. Except the king calls for you, you don't go there. But let this fasting be to support me that as I go. But should I perish? I'm ready. And verse 17. So Mordecai went his way and did according to the goals to all that Esther had commanded him. Get back home, read chapter 5. After the fast was completed, Esther went to the king, contrary to the law of the palace. And the king said, hey, my dear, come on here. Fasting changed the event. The entire Jews were rescued. In the days of Ezra, they were confused. They didn't know what to do. Verse 21 and 23, chapter 8. Chapter 8. So when you are confused, you need divine direction. The first one, when you need intervention, you can fast. The second one, when you need direction, you can fast. Then I proclaim the fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves or deny ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. They were looking for direction. For I was ashamed to require of the king, band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we had boasted unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them that do good for good and that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. And what happened? So we fasted in order to seek the face of our God for thee, and he answered us. When you need intervention, state it clearly. When you need direction, state it clearly. When you need God to fight for you, example number three, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, three nations came against Jehoshaphat, and in verse three, look at what they did. And Jehoshaphat feared, but in the midst of his fear, he set himself to seek the Lord. Sometimes you fear, but seek the Lord all the same. And he proclaimed fast throughout all Judah, and we know what happened eventually in verse 24. All of the enemies were destroyed. So we must define our goals and objective. Number two, you must prepare to engage your heart in prayer. Engage your heart. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. The preparation in the heart of man determines the answer from the Lord. God answers you according to your heart. He sees your heart before he hears your voice. He sees your heart before he hears your voice. He searches your heart. That's why there are times you may not have good expression for your heart's desire. And so he looks into your heart to help you out. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 21. We are required to engage our heart. Engage your heart. When you are praying, God looks at your heart. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And you shall seek for me and search for me. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. All your heart. So you must fight distractions. And let me recommend for you, one way to fight distraction physically is when you are praying, especially congregational prayer, close your eyes. Don't allow people around you to distract you. If you have anything valuable that you are afraid somebody may take, hold it in your hand. Because distractions are bound. You must fight it. And to fight distraction of the mind, pray in the Holy Ghost. Because when your voice is loud in prayer, the noises around you of distraction goes down. There are people, they don't make noise outside, but they make a lot of noise inside their heart when they are praying. Noise in the kitchen, noise about businesses, so many things blocking your mind. You need to pray with your heart and from your heart. Number three, you must come confessing and forsaking your sin. Sin is number one entrance to prayer. 
Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, For the Lord's hands are not short that he cannot save you, nor his ears heavy that he cannot hear you. But your iniquity, your iniquity have separated between God and you, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. He that regardeth sin in his heart, the Lord will not hear him. Psalm 66, verse 18. But if we come to him, confessing our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. First John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Number four, you must come reminding God of his word. The language of prayer is a word, not your cry. Your cry will get his attention, but your words will set to your matter. Your cry may get his attention, like Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood. They were watching each other. And to help him out, Jesus said, what do you want me to do? And he answered, that I may receive my sight. Cry gets God's attention, but the word settles your matter. In the days of Daniel, the angel came and said to him, we have heard your cry, but now we have come for your words. We have come for your words. In prayer, God measures, he assesses your words to measure your answer. He assesses your words to measure your answers. We have come for your words. We have come for your words. In prayer, God comes for your words. Your words. Isaiah 43, verse 26, very clear. God comes for our words. Plead your cause. That's what I have come for. Then declare. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. You declare. And then you will be justified. You will be given the answers that you need. So you have to be word loaded. You have to be word conscious. First John 5.14. This is the confidence that we have when we ask for anything according to his word. He heareth us. He hears us according to the words. If you have the word, you don't waste time in prayer. Are you suffering affliction? Father, your word said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. Therefore, I condemn them right now. Shake it Done. Are you suffering sickness? Father, is it not written that you took my sickness and my infirmity away? Therefore, you foul devil, sickness, get off my body. That's how to get it done. Number five, you must engage in kingdom advancement prayer as priority. That is, put the kingdom first. Matthew chapter nine, or chapter six rather, from verse six, God sees you in the secret, the word in the open, and verse nine, he said, when you pray, this is how the pattern follows. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, verse 10, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things you need shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. What does that mean? In this prayer and fasting season, before you pray for yourself, pray for the kingdom. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for communities to be taken over for Jesus. Pray for members of your cell. Pray for members of the church that have need. Pray for your unique members that you know have need. Do like Job. He prayed for his friends and God gave him double. When you pray for yourself, you have one. When you pray for others, God gives you two. And number six, we should also engage praying in the spirit. This is very crucial. Romans 8, 26, 27. We are limited in our understanding, even of the things we need. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, also 
helps our infirmity, our limitations, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray. We don't know as we should do. For as we ought, but the Holy Spirit takes over by making intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered, groanings in the Spirit. Praying in the language of the Holy Spirit is the groaning we are to pray with. Omorola kata shekrendeglida dahasite namanglektush kadania. All of us know that there is a level of prayer you know that your own human language cannot cope any longer. And that is how and when you suddenly switch to the Holy Spirit. Moreover, Kitando Shekedendaya. At that time, the Holy Ghost has taken over with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And what more? Verse 27. The Holy Spirit searches the heart of God. The Holy Spirit comes to give you expo on how to pray. He searches the heart of God. He knows what is in the mind of God. And he comes to reveal it to us. Either by praying in our language or by the language of the Holy Spirit. If you approach prayer in these six ways, among others, you will never suffer lack of answer to your prayer. Say loud, amen. amen. Remember, from this list, when you are fasting, you have to be word loaded. Number two, you have to be prayerful. Number three, you got to engage in prayer and, I mean, in praise and worship to lighten the environment, to get you spiritually sensitive and emotionally attached to God. And don't miss fellowship. Praying with other brethren enhances the quality of your prayer. It strengthens your heart when you are weak. May I recommend, therefore, in this course of prayer and fasting, make sure you have a prayer partner. Make sure you pray with the brethren at the Winner Satellite Fellowship every Saturday. And don't fail to be at the Covenant Hour of Prayer. And on our daily prayer schedule from Monday to Friday, every evening. If you do all of these, you see your spirit lifted. You see your soul loaded. And your atmosphere charged with answers. Now, lift up your hand. Everybody, pray in the Holy Ghost with me right now. Do that right now. Pray in the language of the Holy Spirit. Let him help your infirmity. Let him help your infirmity. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Somebody say with me again, enough is enough. Who said so? Who said so? Do you believe it? If you believe it, say it. If you believe it, say it. You see, God is always waiting for you to say what he says. Once you can say it, then he's set to do it. Your mouth is what is holding down the hand of God. He says it, you receive it, you declare it, and he does it. One of the greatest attacks of the devil on you is not to say what God said. Some people say, how, how, how can I say I'm strong? When I know that I'm weak, I'm feeling weak now. And you say, as you say, I'm strong. No, I'm not a baby now. I can't deceive myself. I can't, that's what I don't like in that church. They'll be telling us to be saying what we know that is not available. <laughs> God taught Abraham how to say. First of all, by changing his name from Abraham to Abraham. Abraham means father of nations. And here you are, you don't have a child. So everywhere you go, it's father of nations. Father of nations. Where are your children? Well, God say as you say so. And that's the truth. God say as you say so. God said as you say so. How can I say I'm rich when I know that I just borrowed money to eat breakfast today? Why are you saying that? God said, I should say so. 
God said, I should say so. It's as simple as that. And I, in any case, I'm the owner of my mouth. If it doesn't happen, what's your business? <laughs> what's your, why are you worried for me? Why are you worried for me? If I say so, it doesn't happen. Leave me to it. Let me die with it. We worry ourselves too much. What if I say it doesn't happen? He said, say it. He didn't ask you whether it happens or not. And in any case, if you want to go on the path of probability, you ask yourself, what if it doesn't happen? Why can't you ask yourself also, what if it happens? What if it happens? What if it happens? I will be the head and not the tail. What if it happens? Like it has happened to many people, including my humble self. What if it happens? What if it happens? So God said, enough is enough. What are you saying? Let God hear you. Let your situation hear you. Let all the devils hear you right now. Why enough is enough? Because your warfare is already accomplished. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 2. Comfort ye my people. Comfort ye my people, say the Lord. So I'm speaking comfort to you right now. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Speak ye comfortably to winners in Goshen. And cry unto her. You wonder why I'm crying? That your warfare is accomplished. In case what came to you came from sin, he said for me to tell you your iniquity is pardoned. For you shall receive of the Lord's hand double for all of your sins. Jesus said, John 19 30, it is finished. And it is finished means it is finished. Finished with your suffering. So, enough in enough means bringing an end to all negative situations and circumstances of life, bringing an end to all the works of the devil. If you can lift up your hand, I decree that an end has come to your suffering. Don't forget, you are to come with your list of enough is enough. If you have it there, put it in front of you on the floor right now. The God of this commission, the God of Oedipo, who lives in Canaan land and by extension lives in Goshen here, will answer you speedily today. All who are waiting to see your end, you will see their end now. How do you put an end to age-long afflictions? Number one, make your choice to serve the Lord. The anchor for the liberty of the children of Israel from Egypt is, we want to go to serve the Lord. We want to go to serve the Lord. Exodus 4, 22, 23. Let my people go. Thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Enough. For thus said the Lord Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto you, Let my son go, that he may serve me. That he may serve me. That he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your son, even your first son. I will kill him. So when you choose to serve God, anything that stands on the way becomes crushed by the mighty strength of God. Make your choice to serve God. That commits him to your rescue from all oppressions of the devil. However, serving God is not a gift. It's a choice. You have to make your choice. Joshua 24, 15, as for me as my house, we have chosen to serve the Lord. Your covenant commitment to serve God in season and out of season is gateway to your all-round rest. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. They made the choice to serve their God. They entered into a covenant to serve the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts, with all their soul, to a point that whosoever will not seek the Lord or serve the Lord God of Israel should be put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman, 
and they swear unto the Lord God with a loud voice. I'm going to serve you, Lord. We are going to serve you, Lord. And with excitement, with shouting, with trumpet, and with cornets. And what happened? They rejoice in the host. For they are sworn with all their heart and certain with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And as a result of their commitment to serve the Lord, the Lord gave them rest round about. He gave them rest. The ultimate of enough is enough. It's rest. Rest. From today, in your family, rest. In your business and career, rest. In all the works of your hand, rest. What are you having from this service today? Say it again. Make it loud. So to maximize the blessedness of our promised land, this year as individuals, we have two simple commandments to follow. Number one, love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. Love the Lord with the whole of your heart. Deuteronomy 11, 22 to 25. If you will diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them and to love the Lord your God. To love the Lord your God. Which is expressed by walking in all his ways. And to cleave to him. To hold fast to the Lord. Come sun, come rain. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. And ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourself. Somebody say amen to that. If you love the Lord your God, then every place whereon the sole of your feet shall tread shall be yours. If you just love God, I mean, very simple, straightforward. You will be possessing the land just for loving God. You don't need to be strong. Just be a lover. Just like a wife does not have to be a strong wife, but a lover of the husband. He said he will make you tread upon every place and it shall be given to you. And verse 25, there shall no man be able to stand before you. For what? For being a lover of God. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you. That means people will become afraid of you. Your stature notwithstanding. They'll be afraid of you. I will make them fear you if you love me. If you love God, then all things will be working together for your good. That's many. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love him. Including the devil. He'll be working for your good without him knowing. People who don't know you before will be loving you and serving you. People who hate you, when they see you appear, their mind is changed towards you to love you. Because you are God's lover. Say loud, Amen. If you want to maximize the blessedness of our promised land this year, number two for you to do is to serve God. Love God. Serve God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Love God. Exodus 23, 25, 26, you shall love the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of you. If you just love him and serve him. Serving God. Serving God. Serving God. He will bless your bread. Many people have bread, but it's not blessed. There are two different things. It will bless your water. To the point that that blessing will take sickness away from you, that means your food will turn into medicine. That's what I do. I don't live on drugs. I live on food. The food I eat that is blessed carries medicine inside it. The number of your days you shall fulfill. None shall be barren in the land. If you will serve them, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36, verse 11. Love God. Serve God. Love God. Serve God. That is number one thing if you want God to rise to tell the devil enough is enough. Number two, react to your situation. Don't sit down on the same spot. Don't say if God will do it, he will do it. No, react. I don't want this situation again. I'm tired of this failure. I'm tired of this hunger. I'm tired of this poverty. I'm tired of this failure. There must be reaction. 
if there is no reaction to the ground, the vehicle cannot move. How does a vehicle move? You start the engine, engage the gear, and the power will be transmitted to the tire for the tire to say to the ground, we are moving now. You need to engage in reaction. In the word of God, servant Bishop Oedeko, what you don't want, you don't watch. You need to react. Give no more place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21. You foul devil, you have deceived me enough. I know it is my right to live long. I know it is my right to live in good health. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. If you are gentle, you will be a loser. Matthew eleven twelve, 12. The kingdom of God suffers violence and only the violent take it. If you are gentle, you will lose it. If you are violent, you will take it. You need to be violent. You need to be violent. Satan is not a gentleman. He won't let you go anyhow. You need to be violent. You need to be violent in the face. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Why? That you may lay hold of the benefits of eternal life. You can't take what is yours by chance. You can't take what is yours by negotiation. You can only possess what is yours by a fight. 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 Fight for what belongs to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus came not as a passive person. He came as a fighter. He was literally, spiritually angry. Otherwise, I will listen to somebody lying down on the couch. And Jesus will take to the person, take up your bed and go home. Take up your bed and go home. Somebody innocently will be in a meeting with his hand with that. And Jesus will tell the person, stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand and receive your healing. Clear off. He was spiritually violent. Why do we speak to some of you the way we speak? If I don't speak to you that way, Satan won't let you go. He won't let you go. If I'm listening to what you are saying, he won't let you go. You are explaining to me, you know, you see, you see, uh, when I get pregnant, the thing just comes back. Say, shut up! You won't lose any child again. I say, yes, sir. I say, say, I will not lose any child again. You may not like it, but I force you to say it. And once I force you to say it, God is forced to do it. Be spiritually valid. That's why when it's time to pray this morning, don't pray gentleman's prayer. You pray as if you are the only one here. Enough is enough. I say enough is enough. You point to those material. Enough. Enough. Sickness, I say it's enough. God said it is enough. God's servant said it is enough. I'm also saying it is enough. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's worried. Is it a fight? Yes, it's a fight. It's a fight. Do oh. you know something? You are brought here this morning to fight. If you don't want to fight, you can go through the doors. But the one you have come today, you must fight. Did you hear me at all? Tell your neighbor, you must fight. If I see you, you don't pray. I will come there and bring you to the altar. Amen. <laughs> and I will hold your hand by force. And make you to be saying it by force. Is it by force? Today is by force. You may not come tomorrow, but today is by force. Why? I want to see you free. Shout it, I am free. One more time, I'm free. I'm free. Therefore, we are required to speak to every item on your enough is enough list. You'll be saying it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. God, listen to this. If God did not say it is enough, there would have been destructions. In the same way, if you don't say it, you will suffer it. Don't play with your life. Don't joke with this thing we are talking about. Somebody is asking, must I say it before I am free? If you like, don't say it. When Jesus kept quiet, they took him as sheep and hanged him on the tree. When he spoke, they fell. Psalm 18, verse 44 and verse 45. Hear what David said. When he opened his mouth, as soon as they hear of me, 
they shall obey me. When will the enemy obey you? When he hears you. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. When? When they hear you. Verse 45. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The reason why the devil is hanging around you is because he is not hearing your authority. Your mouth is your authority. Your words are your command. If you would dare do what I'm telling you to do this morning, you will not smell the devil again. Failure, out of my life. Poverty, out of this family. Stagnation, no more here. Sickness, no more room for you. Begging, I'm no longer your companion. Borrowing, you will rule my life again. Untimely death, enough. That young man, when they warned him, not to travel again because he had had three accidents whenever his wife delivered. He said, I must go. I, I, this time around, God's servant said, I will not have accident. He went and no more accident. It's a new day for you. Finally, take advantage of the prophetic grace upon this commission. By a prophet, he brought them out. God said it, your prophet is saying it, and you are saying it. Forget the devil. Forget the devil. If you don't come back with your testimony after this prayer and fasting, then God has not sent Bishop Oedipo. If you don't come back, then God is not the author of the message you are hearing this morning. But as the Lord lives, as the Lord lives, and as you say, as the Lord lives, and as you say it with your mouth, <laughs> say it and you will have it. At the end of the day, when the battle was intense between Pharaoh and Moses, Moses said, <laughs> Go! As you have said, I didn't want you to go, but because you said you must go, go, as you have said. Go as you have said. Go as you have said. They had the final say. Whosoever speaks last has the final say. Don't let the devil be the last speaker on any matter of your life. Keep speaking until the devil is subdued to your authority. Go as you have said. Go as you have said. Go as you have said. Lift up your voice and begin to say it the way you want it. Say it the way you want it. You are not saying it for anybody to hear you. Go as you have said. Go as you have said. You have the final say.